All right, so I'm going to talk today about my project, which was the redesign of our media center or our library in old terms. Um, and I've looked at some past, I've been part of the Next Generation Leadership projects through UK and at KVEC, and looked back at these two years ago when we had to look at problems of practice, and that was the problem that I had written two years ago. So when I looked at that, as research, that was a good place to start because it broke down everything. Um, this summer when we were at Natural Bridge, like Jennifer talked about, we had the pleasure of having Tom Murray for a day. And then using the design thinking for uh, educators and, and Tom Murray, my plan emerged as uh, from a need to update our school, which is sadly out of date. So um, the problem became, you know, with the ever emergent use of technology and trying to move your schools towards 21st century skills, when you look at what we had in the building as a library, it, um, it wasn't utilized at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, that was a holding place most of the time, um, a staff meeting after school, occasionally people in there copying, and that was about it, okay? So um, immediately uh, that problem came up, and we wanted to increase the usage and the purpose, uh, and we wanted it to become the center of our school, a place that the kids would occupy all the time, before school, after school, during school, whenever they could. So at the beginning, um, here is what our library looked like. As you can see, it's very traditional. Bookshelves on the walls, tables, a few computers, um, a huge return center at the center of the desk where um, our media tech sat, a copier, which again, like I said, was about the only time that, that it was utilized. Looking at research, um, I looked at numerous articles on library redesign. Uh, maker spaces was a key term that we looked at. Again, trainings, next gen that we talked about and I've already referred to, and kind of settled on an article that I found from Tom Murray that talked about three keys to designing learning spaces. And um, a section in that article referenced um, Vykovsky's work from the 30s, if you believe it or not, which became the foundation for social developmental theory and the understanding that social interaction plays a fundamental role in the development of cognition. He strongly believed that community played a, played a central role in the process of making meaning. This notion is something that kindergarten and first grade teachers have used for years and mastered, but as students get older and they rise in grade levels, the notion that teachers somehow transfer knowledge to a student and the student is to sit there and remember has become prevalent in, in our educational structure. So the role of play, interaction, and all that becomes minimal at best. Now this was quoted in this article. So how do we counteract that notion that teachers are transmitters and our kids are only to sit still and receive, okay? Um, so we talked about his, his three strategies came from collaboration, inquiry, uh, movement and we added technology centered because we felt that needed to be a place for that and student friendly and again that's how our door looked at our library from the inside going out and this was it that Tom Murray posted on Twitter and if you're not following him on Twitter you need to because you know the, he he will overwhelm you believe you me and you cannot possibly look at everything that that he posts but it, all of it is relevant but this is very true, uh, you know, and I've seen it with my own kids who are coming through the elementary systems right now. But school loves the learn, turns the love of learning right out of kids by the time they graduate by asking them to conform, sit still, be receivers all the time. Okay, so we don't want this at all. All right, so um, we got started. Of the plan was we wanted everyone involved, as many people involved as we could get, and that was teachers, staff members, students, parents, community members, anybody that we could have. I initially started talking to a group of students and getting their ideas and asking teachers to volunteer their time. And of course, as you move through the process, that whittles down to a few key people that you depend on. But we, we always seek input. Um, we just found out we're getting new flooring for the library because the superintendent saw what we'd started and the floor is hideous. So he said, would you like new floor? And, and so, you know, the carpenter or the maintenance guys have brought all these samples of flooring and so everybody in the building's been in. What do you think? What do you think? So we're trying to get as much input into it as we can. 
So we, want the, we wanted the space to be future ready. Uh, we wanted a consensus on the design. Again, the first uh, drafts were pencil drawn and our library is very weirdly shaped so it looked like a baseball field when we were drawing it out. Um, but, and we wanted to you know, get the plan designed, everybody reach consensus and then, and then go from there. Um, let's see what's next. So this, I had a teacher who's technology savvy and that's Kelly Bowles, of course. And so she took our rough pencil drawings and she found Floor Planner uh, app and she transferred that to this app and it, it will actually turn 3D. So the initial idea was simple and that was we're gonna rip all the existing bookshelves off the wall, cut them in half, put them back to back and section the library off. And um, we wanted a reading area, we wanted um, a classroom area, we wanted a research area, we wanted a makerspace area. So we included spaces for 3D printers and a Lego table that we were gonna make. Now granted, we have none of this, you know, but, but, but that's what we wanted, you know. <laughs> we, we, had, we had any none of this and no way we thought we could do it. Uh, we talked about glass whiteboards. We wanted glass whiteboards and cork boards around the room and uh, just things that could move and funky furniture and bright colors and we knew all, you know, we knew what we wanted. So um, it started with we hosted the board meeting in February and I knew the maintenance director would be at the board meeting because they have to present each time. So I kind of cornered him and I said, can I have Phil? I know who the carpenter is on our maintenance team and he said, what are you doing? And I, so I told him, I want these shelves off the wall, I want to do this and that. So, lo and behold, he said, well, I'll see. And a couple of days later, Phil came up and said, Greg said you had an idea. And so, I got out the plan and I showed it to him. And by the way, this plan is to scale. And Phil gets out his measure and, and starts measuring. So, this has to be this many feet and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and they start to work. And I tell him the initial plan and I show it to him. And he said, well, we love projects. We'll be glad to help. As long as he lets us, we'll be here. And uh, so I met with the team and Ms. Grace and Ms. Flanner. They've all had input on it, but those are the um, main go-tos. But we run and we're so happy, you know, with everything. And I tell him we'll have all the bookshelves and everything else so he can start. So he's going to come Monday. So we empty the place out. And we move all the books to another room. And the shelves that are on the wall are solid wood. Everything's good. So they, he was able to reuse a lot of the stuff that he had. This is Phil. He's a miracle worker. He's the master carpenter, Clyde is the painter, and uh, Jeff and Don are two uh, ele electricians that have been working. Um, so th the idea came from, you know, this just this man will come up and take the bookshelves off to all these guys were coming up, and Greg had told, we're going to eventually switch to LEDs. Do you care if we go ahead and switch all your lights out to LED lights? Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> and Phil says, well, I see that you have it drawn this way. Do you care if I add this to it? No, go ahead, that'd be great. So then we ended up calling a local company and ordering glass for our whiteboards. And our idea was we're going to put glass on the, wall, on the wall and put some Christmas lights behind it to light it up. And Phil says, what well, do you care if I box that in? How about fluorescent lights behind it instead, or an LED light behind it instead of that? So, I mean, everything has, has happened. So Don, after they changed all the lights out to LEDs, decided, asked me if I cared if they put dimmer switches on them. So, no, so they went back and ran an additional wire to every light so that the sections dim. The classroom section now can stay as light or dim. The reading nook can stay lit or be turned off. It's just amazing. Then um, I had bought, they asked me to buy a stereo system, which was the first thing I bought was 80 some dollars. So a stereo deck and two speakers. And, and they connected that into the existing system. So now I have surround sound that connects by uh, Bluetooth. So anything you go in there, Bluetooth. Yesterday they got my projector hooked up and they said, do you think you could buy a new projector because this one is, yeah, we'll find the money. So my tech guy's finding the money for a new projector, but it's just been amazing. Back, back in the back is, is uh, this is part of the nook. So that's what the shelves look like back to back and cut together. And this is the beginning of his frame for our glass whiteboards that he was building and he designed. And this is what they ended up looking like. So you see how, and then of course we wanted our projector screen in the corner and he said, well that looks awful just hanging that screen in the corner, so do you care if I box that in too? <laughs> so that's the corner where my projector screen is and where the tape deck is and the speakers are mounted and, 
And this, you can't, I apologize for the picture with the whiteboard. You can't see it very well, but it's beautiful. You're all invited to come and see it in person. But um, uh, it all looks, and this is kind of, we had refurbished um, the old library return desk to be what we wanted to be our 3D printer stand. At the time, we didn't have them. But we had a teacher in a class of computer science kids who won a, an app challenge, and they bought two 3D printers and all the filaments that go with that. So we were refurbishing that desk, and Phil said, well, that looks kind of tacky now that these boards, do you care if I build a counter for your 3D printers? I said, no. Do you care if I put can lighting over top? Well, no, that sounds great. So, I mean, I have paid for... Um, the speakers, we paid for Lego plates and Lego tables because we're going to refurbish a couple of the tables into Lego tables. But this is what our 3D printer thing looks like, and it's, it has all the data, can lighting, and you can see. And I, even down to the electrical plugins that have USB outlets in them. Have you seen those? They're fabulous, by the way. But they have put that all over the, the library. So um, we went to, we had a couple places where we wanted cork boards, and we thought about the wear and tear on a cork board over the years. So I was researching one night, and I found what was called a mag board. So, and they're just sheets of steel that can act as a white board or a magnetic board. So we bought those, and guess what? He framed those for us, too. And so these are our magnetic boards that are between our two white boards. So we're still very much a work in progress. Um, but the result so far has been way beyond anything that we could have ever, ever imagined. We do know now that um, as they're working to finish up the shelving, and he got the last mag board mounted yesterday, and they got all the sound and the lighting done yesterday and all the ceiling tiles replaced, and at the end of the year they're going to put the new flooring down, which a lot of people had say in, and uh, then we're going to go for there. But uh, I picked up, I got an article in the mail or a magazine in the mail, and I picked that up, and I was just flipping through it, and I'm sure a lot of you may have gotten it. It was called EdTech, and there was an article in there that was called Making Spaces, and it said, New Jersey librarian offered, offered tips on ultimate maker spaces for students. So I took this in, and I showed our guys, and a lot of the stuff that we were doing is in is in this article about how she refurbished old tables to Lego tables and how one idea that she did have that we had in here that is our next plan is they have an area where they have the tech guys involved from the county um, and they put old computers at a section for a makerspace and they let the kids tinker and take computers apart and put them back together and try to build. So that's an area I want to add to ours also. But but when I show them this, these guys, I mean, all they want is thanks, but they are master craftsmen. So if, if you guys, I mean, any of you want to come and see, it is wonderful and far beyond our expectations. So if you have an idea and there's anything holding you back, don't let it because you will, it will flow out as soon as you start. All you got to do is start. That's the first step. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Money-wise, I think the, for me, um, less than $1,000. And my money has been um, Lego plates, and Legos were the highest cost we've had. We bought 5,000 Legos and enough plates to turn to, you know, glue down and make us some tables. And I have bought um, the speakers and, and the tape deck, and that's it so far. And the rest of it, the district has done. I think the flooring is going to be about $7,000, I was told. And it's going to be tiled. And, um, but having an architect come in and, dog, and draw it up, would not, it would not have meant the same thing. Right. You see, because we are, right, there instead of ours. And this will be ours. So I think that's the biggest difference. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and tell them there. <laughs> it is a it's a marble looking tile. It will look marble when it goes down with gray through it. So we we argued. They they told me I was old fashioned, and the one I picked up looked like what was it, Mr. Bain? Planks on a pirate ship. 
Yes, he, he said, I was old fashioned because I, I wanted a wood look, but it, he said it looked like planks on a pirate ship. So most everybody that came in there picked out something light, wanted futuristic. So he brought, we were, we were um, kind of between two different types. And yesterday he brought a, an outside, a different choice, and everybody immediately said, yeah, that's it. So, so that's what we chose for you. You're right. That makes all the difference. And they've got a good reason. Oh, well, 